Hi, for, for Longwood University, I am Scott Wetland. And if you're watching this video, you are curious about this summer's economics and personal finance course offered at Longwood University for high school students. Now this is going to be a college course, which is going to be offered as Finance 250. And you might be curious about, you know, sort of how this might work and what, you know, what this is exactly going to entail, what the time requirements are, are sort of going to go into this, and a number of other questions that you might have about this course, which I hope, I'd, hope to answer in this video. So what's this course going to be about? Well, we're going to be covering a broad range of topics in both personal finance and economics. Now, we're going to be covering a lot of different topics in a very short period of time. In fact, it's going to be about four weeks period of time, which we're going, to, which we're going to cover topics like time value of money, investing in the stock market and bonds, real estate, mortgages, credit and, and uh, debt, and all sorts of issues related to personal finance, and then also a number of economic issues in a, a wide range of economic areas or economic subdisciplines like microeconomics, macroeconomics, international economics labor economics, and money and banking, okay, among other topics, you know, that we think are incredibly valuable to you, and in fact, we think that the, the kinds of topics we're going to cover in this course will have immense practical value to you, but may very well be the most valuable course that you take, maybe in your entire high school or college career. So why are we offering this course to you, and, you know, what's really in it? For us? Well, first off, we have a passion for teaching financial responsibility. And certainly, me as an economist, I certainly would like to sort of get the word out on financial responsibility, financial literacy, and economics more generally. Now, we think that this is incredibly important to really, you know, in a lot of different ways, not only individually, but collectively. Now, it's not really a, a secret that, that the last financial crisis was, or at least a major contributing factor to it, was financial illiteracy. And this is something that we want to help or we want to be part of the solution so that maybe this will help prevent not only the next financial crisis, but will also help you personally and be incredibly valuable to you. Now, what else is in it for us? Besides just simply getting the word out on personal finance and economics, is also incredibly helpful to promote Longwood University. Now, you can almost think of this as sort of a try it for 30 days to see if you like it sort of deal, where basically, you know, you don't really get that deal unless it, you know, somebody is happy or proud to present you with that product. And that's sort of one way of thinking about this course. That this is something that we feel you'll find incredibly valuable. We think you'll get a lot out of this course and it's our incentive to provide you the best possible course possible, okay, so that you or maybe your friends or people you talk to will consider Longwood University as a potential school to apply to when that time comes. So why take this course? Other than certainly your love of, or potential love for personal finance and economics, which you may not know you already have. Well, this course also happens to satisfy a number of requirements for you for that, uh, that you'll have to take to, to get through high school. For one, this will satisfy the mandated economics and personal finance graduation requirement in the state of Virginia. This course, because it's both personal finance and economics, it covers all of the, the requirements for, for the uh, financial literacy and, and requirements for personal finance and economics. And at the end of the course, we're going to be taking the WISE Financial Literacy Exam, which will get you your fi WISE Financial Literacy Certification, which will satisfy the certification requirement or skills requirement. Second, this will also satisfy the online state requirement, that, uh, the, some sort of online experience for you that will check that box. And finally, this is going to earn you three hours of college credit. Now, you don't need college credit to, obviously, to, to leave high school, but once you leave high school, having college credit in your back pocket is certainly a very nice thing to have. Certainly, if you pass this course with a C or better, that you will get full credit for this course, 
And this course satisfies, at Longwood University, it satisfies the mathematics requirements for all students that they need to graduate. Now this is one of several courses that satisfies the general education requirement for Longwood students. But this is also a sufficiently general course and Longwood, United, Longwood University is a state institution that, uh, and also an AACSB accredited business school that, that we, can, we can say that this will likely transfer or this will transfer to most schools that will have, that will have some sort of agreement uh, to accept transfer credit from legitimate school. So, so certainly you'll have to, to check with your potential university if you, were make, if you were to make the unwise decision not to go to Longwood University, of course, say that tongue in cheek, but certainly if you go to another university, you can check to see if this course will transfer. We think that uh, it will transfer most places, but certainly you can check that out. Nonetheless, you get, you check off a lot of, a lot of requirements for high school, and you also get that, that college course that certainly has got to be a very attractive thing to accomplish in just 30 short days. So given that this course is only 30 days, you might think, well, you know, this seems very attractive. It's nice to, to knock this out in 30 days. That's, that seems pretty, pretty easy, easy enough. Well, I'll have to preface this by saying that this is going to be anything but just a breeze you know, breeze through course, walk in the park kind of course, because this course is going to be incredibly rigorous. It's going to be a college, a, a, a college course like you'd have, you know, any other college course. It's going to require a lot of time on your part. It's going to re require approximately six hours on average per day. And I say on average, because on some days it might take you a little bit longer. It might take you eight hours and some days it might take you a little bit less, four hours or so. But for the most part, it's going to average, you're going to average about six hours per day over this month period of time. Now, the nature of this course will be flexible. It might, you might be able to work ahead on some days when you have a little bit more time, and you might be able to catch up on, on days uh, or you know, work ahead in ways that if you have some sort of event or some sort of uh, you know, uh, sport or athletic event that you're going to, that uh, certainly there's going to be some flexibility in, built in there. Now, this course is also very math intensive. Now, it's going to require a lot of time on your part, but it's going to, be, it's going to require some, some you know, uh, practice with mathematics. Now, this isn't going to be, we're not going to be using calculus or any sort of complex mathematics like that. So this is really math, math for all ages, or at least all high school, uh, all high school levels. In the sense that we're going to be using a lot of arithmetic and some algebra, things like that. It's going to be at the fairly, fairly basic level, but we're going to be using a lot of math to apply to these personal finance and economics topics. Now, a lot of these topics, whether you're dealing with a mortgage or whether you're dealing with time value of money or some economics topics, they're going to be quantitative in nature, and so it's going to be fairly math intensive. So the course, you might be thinking, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a rigorous course, it's going to be a math intensive course, but what about this online requirement, or what about this, 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 the nature of this of an online course? Well, if you're watching this video, one of the reasons why we put together this video like we have right now is that this is going to be more or less how this course is going to feel. That we have lectures that we've prepared. And it'll be a little bit different. We're going to be drawing on, on the screen and, um, and working through problems and different things like that. It's not going to be just simply me talking the whole time. But for the most part, it's going to be more or less like this. But the advantage of this is that it's actually going to be what we call asynchronous, or at least you won't have to be at you know, a set place at a set time every single day. That you can watch the videos at your own pace. You can rewind if you want to. If you, you know, felt that you didn't quite get the last thing I said, you can go back and rewind and watch it over again until you've nailed down the concept. And to some extent, this is going to be very flex. This will be a very flexible format. If you're not, if you're, you know, not a great learner at eight o'clock in the morning, then you don't have to to watch the lectures at eight o'clock in the morning. You can watch it at noon. Certainly for the summer, that can be quite advantageous to you. Now, given the, the nature of the asynchronous course, there's still going to be 
you know, quizzes and deadlines and different things that you have to meet, but the, the actual content itself is going to be delivered in a way that, you know, you will, you'll have maximum flexibility. Now, the course itself is going to be equally divided among economics and personal finance, containing about 30 modules. In each module, you have a lecture, you'll have readings, and you also have practice quizzes and graded quizzes. Basically, what you'll do is you'll, so for a given module, you'll start out by, you know, reading a chapter, for example. Then you will watch a lecture, some, something like this. You know, the lecture may range anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes or so, uh, depending on, you know, the, the exact lecture. And then you will uh, take practice quizzes to make sure that you've mastered the material. Make, make sure that you have really, you know, got it all down. And then you'll take a graded quiz, which will test you over more or less the same material as the practice quiz has just tested, on, tested you on. So if you've nailed the practice quiz, which you can take multiple times if you want, if you nailed that, you'll be prepared for the graded quiz, and the graded quiz will really let you know how, how much you really understand some of these topics. And certainly if you have additional questions about those topics, you can talk to Dr. Waller or, or, or myself to, to go through some additional questions on that. Now, each quiz, and what I'll get to in just a second, each, each exam is going to be scheduled to be due at a certain date. Now, as I said, there's gonna be flexibility here so that you can work ahead. And if you have, let's say, a family vacation or something like that, which, you know, in this course, we don't recommend you schedule your vacation, but if you do have some little bit of overlap, you can be flexible in the sense you can get your work done ahead of time and, and you can uh, sort of fit things in there uh, as, as, as certainly your schedule permits. Now, we're going to have three exams for this course. Really, the quizzes are there to help prepare you for the actual exam. And the first two exams are going to be they're going to be graded, and they're going to be kind of like your quizzes, but much longer. They're going to be open book, just as your quizzes are. But these are going to be taken on the honor system. These are going to be unproctored exams. Our final exam, on the other hand, is going to be proctored. And we do this for the integrity of the course. This is going to be highly, a highly weighted part of your grade, so that no student is really going to be able to get through this course without taking a proctor exam, and this exam is going to be uh, proctored at Longwood University with Dr. Waller and I. So some important dates that you need to, to remember as, uh, as far as this course is concerned. The course is not entirely online, it's mostly online, okay, for the more, more or less, it's a, this is an online course, with the exception of a few important dates. The important dates you need to know is first, June 16th, and this is going to be an initial introduction of the course. Our goal for our initial introduction, on, which will be the first day of class, is to really acquaint you with us, the professors, me uh, and Dr. Waller, and also to really walk you through exactly how the course works. And we understand this may be your first online course, and if it is, we can walk you through all of the, how to, how to work the technology, how to go to our course site, how to access the quizzes, how to take the exam, also to how to access the videos and everything that you'll need to know. You'll walk out of the first day knowing what the course entails. You'll have a detailed you know, idea of, of the syllabus and how you're, you, know, you need to allocate your time everything you need to know is going to be covered that first day of class. Now, if you decide that you don't want to go forward, if you know you can you know, come to the first day and you say, well, this class just isn't for me now that I know all of what it entails, then you can certainly uh, unregister for the class and you, it'll be free of charge. So that's, that's always a, a nice thing. Certainly we've had students in the past say, whoa, 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 this is going to be quite the, the time commitment I don't quite know if I'm going to have the time to, to, to complete this. Or, you know, maybe something else came up between the, the time that you registered for the course and the time that you actually come the first day. And you decide, eh, I might not be able to, to finish this in, in, in this, you know, short window uh, of time. 
So that's certainly something that, that June 16th is, is uh, sort of designed to do, to sort of give you an idea of, of what, what your, the course is going to entail going forward. The second date, June 30th, is going to be the second time we get together. Again, we're going to have some discussions. We're going to have a review of the, uh, of the, the first part and actually the second part of the course we're going to introduce to you. And we're going to go through the project that you'll have for the second half of the course. Now, these are mandatory uh, times that we need to get together. This is if you, if you register for the course, that you'll need to come to all these meetings. And if for some reason you can't come to one or part of it, we'll work something out in terms of, uh, you know, makeups and things like that. But certainly we, we recommend or we strongly recommend that everybody has those dates free if they register for the course. And finally, July 12th is going to be your final exam day. It's going to be the last day of the course. All students will gather at Longwood University. It's going to be up to you to, to travel here. Uh, students and their families are going to be invited to have a, a day at Longwood. Now, while the students are taking their final exam and going through some um, final exercises for the course, we're actually going to have a day for the family. Okay? This day for the family is, is going to have a number of different things available for everybody. It's going to be full of events. Parents and siblings are all welcome to attend. There's going to be a lunch. There's going to be some sessions where you're going to be able to talk with admissions, uh, admissions uh, administrators at Longwood University who can really help, help you navigate the college admissions process. So this is good for everybody, not just people that want to go to Longwood University, but they'll give you some general advice about you know, what, what, what needs to be in that college essay and, and what are admissions officers looking for, uh, what kinds of extracurriculars you might want, and some different questions that you might have that, uh, that might give you a bit different perspective than your, your guidance counselor, um, certainly from the, the college's perspective rather than sort of the, the high school's perspective. And, you know, we'll have uh, various, uh, you know, events planned for you. Certainly we'll give you a full schedule of events that, uh, that, that you know, well prior to July 12th. And finally, we'll give you a, a tour of Longwood University, sort of show you what, uh, what's here at Longwood if you've never been here. And we'll have a, you know, a variety of things set up for you that certainly our feedback from the, in the past has been that this has been one of the, the best days or the best parts of the course. And certainly we're, we're excited about doing this going forward. So if it sounds like, eh, you know, I gotta go to Longwood University, you know, I don't know how thrilled I am about that. Well, we promise you that Virtually everybody had positive feedback on this, uh, and, and everybody certainly loved this, this uh, final day of this, the final day of the course. So I want to highlight a couple more things to sort of end, end off here. I want to highlight a very important, uh, a very important uh, uh, thing that I wanted to, to, to mention about this course, is that each student is going to be enrolled in this course as an official Longwood University student. And what I mean by that, each student is going to have a, a Longwood student ID, they're going to have an email address, Longwood email address, Longwood transcripts, that you're gonna have access to campus and all of that, and you can, more or less, you're basically a Longwood student. Which also means that you're subjected to all the rules and regulations of Longwood University, and also Longwood University's honor code. Now, more practically, what does that mean? Practically, this means that faculty, just like any, you know, any other college student, faculty will communicate with the students alone. So prior to the course beginning, we'll talk to parents and certainly we'll you know, communicate all of what the course is going to be about and that, and that sort of thing. But once the course, course begins, it's going to be like any other college course in the sense that students communicate with the faculty. We want to cultivate that faculty-student relationship just like we have in college. And certainly this is, you know, in college faculty rarely, if ever, talk to parents because, you know, for, right, for all intents and purposes, you have an adult attending college and this will be a college experience for everybody. That being said, we, you know, 
The reason why we do this, not only to give you that college experience, but it also helps with some additional headaches that we've encountered in the past. In the past, we've had some parents say, you know, you know, want to get coached on how to, let's say, you know, go over the time value of money or, or how to, to work out a mortgage schedule or something like that, uh, which the student is, is ha may have a hard time with. And so we essentially need to teach the parent so that the parent can teach the student. And then sometimes some gets lost when we teach the parent to teach the student. And we, you know, we get you know, sort of a messy middleman. So we're just gonna cut out the middleman and we're going to deal directly with the student. So the student has trouble understanding a particular concept. We'll work directly with the student. And that's really what the college relationship between a professor and a student is all about. Now, I say this in this promotional video because I want to give you, give you a sense of really how this course is going to act, actually work. And we'll have this all sort of uh, written out and uh, we'll have a form that really highlights all of these expectations of the parents and the students and the professors and all of that sort of thing. And, and I think this is important given that this is an online class and communication, which is mostly email, uh, is primarily going to be this student and, and professor. Now, one last thing with that, if certainly a, a parent has a basic question or something like that, we're more than happy to talk with parents. So don't take this to mean that we'll never talk to parents. It's just the primary communication between students and, and the faculty members are going to be, or just be a two-way two -way street there. And finally, what does this all cost you? And that might be Maybe the first question that you might have had, but I wanted to give you sort of overview of the class before we really get into the details of what the cost. The cost is gonna be approximately $400 per student. Now other fees may apply depending on your high school. Some high schools have technology fees and, and you know, a couple other small fees that may you know, make the, the cost be a bit more than $400. But this is an incredible deal especially if you are considering Longwood University or if you have this course transfer to the university of your choice because this is going to this is going to amount to far less of a price that you would pay if you just went to college you know at 18 years old and you enrolled and you had to pay the average credit you know pay for each credit hour which is what what happens once you enter college so this is going to be an incredible deal and in fact, some, you know, depending on your high school or your county, you, this, this $400 is likely to be an upper bound for you. Some, some counties and some high schools have worked it out so that there are scholarships available or there are slots available for the high school to pay some or all of this tuition. So really what I'd, what I'd like you to do if you're interested in the, taking this course is to contact your, your guidance counselor at your high school to really get a sense of what the full cost of the course is going to be to you. So there's gonna be a couple other things that you'll need to keep in mind when considering the cost of this particular course. That the cost of, a, like any college course, is gonna include the textbook for the course. The textbook that we use is called Personal Finance, Turning Money into Wealth. And this is, we're gonna be using the sixth edition of this book. Now we recommend the sixth edition, but we also accept as a perfectly, uh, perfectly okay substitute is gonna be the fifth edition. Now the reason why we say that is because you might be able to get a used copy of either the sixth or especially the fifth for a much cheaper price when you shop for books. So we, we say that just, to, just when you, if you have some sticker shock when you look at the price online of the sixth edition, don't worry that it's, it's fairly easy to find prior editions, used editions, which will also be acceptable just like any other, any college course. We also recommend that you use the Texas, Texas Instrument BA2 Plus Financial Calculator, which is what we'll be using to show you how to do various calculations uh, in, uh, in this class. Now, we will say that you can use any other financial calculator, any other calculator for that matter. If you have an, I, if you have an uh, iPad or a, a tablet or something like that, you can usually download an app with a financial calculator or, or an advanced calculator that could be even better than this, which, or in much cheaper, maybe 99 cents or, what, or whatever that might be. But the downside of that is, is that Dr. Waller or I may not actually 
know how to use that calculator because it might not be one that we're familiar with. Now, likely we'll be able to know, we'll know how to use most calculators, but we can't guarantee that we know we can walk you through a particular problem if you're using your calculator versus if you're using the calculator that we recommend for the course. So that being said, you can you know, approach the calculator how, however you decide going forward. And finally, you'll need access to high-speed internet. This is going to be mostly an online course, with the exception of the few days that we talked about. But you'll need to have access to the to high-speed internet so that you can watch all the lecture videos, and you can do the quizzes and exams, which will also be online, with the exception of the final exam. Certainly, having a slow dial-up internet connection uh, that uh, you know may give you some problems when you're taking some of the quizzes, and it might give you a bunch of headaches. So access to a computer with a high-speed internet, which could simply be at your school or your library or something along those lines, which some students may do if they don't have it in their home, but making sure that you have access or you'll have routine access to that is incredibly important for this course. And finally, there's a few forms that you'll have to fill out. Now, I know that you're all Virginia residents. If you're watching this video, you're likely from Virginia. But to formalize this, we have some paperwork for you to fill out. You'll need to fill out an in-state tuition form. And you'll also need to fill out what's called a non-degree enrollment form for Longwood University. And there might be some additional paperwork that you'll need to fill out for your high school. So this gets counted uh, toward your degree. Now we'll have all the paperwork and we'll have all of the additional answers for you guys if, uh, if you certainly have any questions going forward. What I'd recommend is that if you have any questions, first start with your guidance counselor and start with your high school to if you know they will likely be able to answer any questions that you have regarding this course. And if you have questions regarding you know, the content of this course or maybe how this course will work or some, you know, other questions you know, specific to the course, don't hesitate to contact me, um, Scott Wentland, or Dr. Waller. Our email addresses are listed here. Mine is uh, w-e-n-t-l-a-n-d-s-a at Longwood uh, longwood.edu and Dr. Waller's is wallerbd at longwood.edu. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope to see you guys enrolled in, into, this, uh, into this online course. And I hope you consider Longwood University, certainly Longwood Personal Finance. I'm Scott Wentland, and for Longwood University and the Center of Financial Re Responsibility, I hope to see you this summer. Thanks.